Today's video is going to be a guide on Ruined Temple Seal. What to bring, how to beat it. It's a very simple raid. You just got to be aware of what's going on. If you like the video and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Tip of the day, if you ever have a guild quest that you like the reward, but the quest you don't like so much, this is usually when like the guild quest, it has like a thousand guild coins, but the quest is like open 10 treasure chests throughout all the continents. Don't fret, pick that quest. A thousand guild coins is super good. And just a tip, giggity, if you saw my last video about teleporting around and just breaking pots, those pots actually count as chests. So you can literally get this quest done in a matter of minutes, even seconds. The more you know. All right, Ruined Temple Seal. It is truly simple. I'm not lying. As long as you just relax and know what's going on around you, you're going to be okay. First and foremost, you got to win the pre-lobby. Make sure everybody has a bonus. You don't necessarily need it. Trust me, I'm the king of that. However, if you do get the bonus, you take 25% less damage from the AoE, and it's very easy to get because the boss is a dark element. So you change your summoner to the light element and bring in your best three power level monsters. Like for me, for example, I went in with the bonus because I use Bastet, Akamamir, and Light Golem, who's A15. And obviously my summoner, I changed the light, but that's how I got the bonus. Once you get into the dungeon, you can switch your monsters. As I talked about in another video about the best free-to-play monsters to bring for Ruined Temple Seal, the main key of this dungeon, number one, is bring damage over time. The only damage that goes onto the boss is damage over time. He takes no damage from skills, no damage from basic attacks. Number two, bring a healer or a shield or support, whatever. If for some reason you do get hit from AoE, you're gonna wanna be able to heal. If one of your damage dealers die, it's good to have a healer reviver like Tion. But really, you don't necessarily need it if you just pay attention. You can dodge 99% of the damage that's coming in. Number three, and most importantly, make sure to dodge the boss's damage. There's patterns to some of it, but a lot of it is very slow and you have plenty of time to dodge as long as you stay close to the boss you won't have any issues because either a you can walk right through the boss and go to the back side and that's the quickest route to get out of pretty much a majority of its stuff lastly the most important tip you have to kill the guard soldier when it comes up if you do not kill the guard soldier then you will wipe It'll say it on the screen and I'll prompt you when it comes up in this video. But yeah, the number one thing is winning in the pre-lobby like I said before. Not only the bonus, but also talk to your teammates. See what kind of damage over time they're bringing. That'll determine what you need to sub in or what weapon to use or whatever the case may be. What I ended up switching to was using Poison with Dark Orbia and Frost with Water Raven. My teammates already had Fire and Electric Shock covered. There was a Fire Orbia, a Fire pixie two akamamirs there was some bleeds in there you just want to make sure that pretty much all damage over times are covered and you can go with what you need now just so you know my frost raven has no devil mods no skill ups whatsoever i don't even have them on like a nuking build i have him on a very tanky build with a lot of accuracy so that if he does get hit he doesn't get one shot but that he can also apply his frost bite but let's start the fight out and i'll kind of explain some things going through the first First skill the boss does is this bow tie skill right here don't stand in red and when I'm fighting the boss I really just don't even look at my skills the only skills I press are my poison skill on dark orbia and frost ravens frostbite other than that I'm looking at what the boss is throwing down and I'm not standing in its skills I also put my AI on follow so all the monsters follow me no matter what. It's not a damage race. You have plenty of time to kill the boss. All the skills are self-explanatory for the most part from the boss. But really there's three main skills I want to talk to you about that you need to pay attention to. One is the skill right here where he casts on one side of his body. As you can see it fills up here. What you want to do is walk directly to the other side. But stay close enough because once 
once this side finishes, he will then cast the same spell on the other side. So you need to walk back. As you can see, he casts on the left and now he casts on the right and we all walk back. If you see right here on the right hand side, there are monsters in that wave. And the reason that is, is because whoever the summoner is using those monsters, they do not have the AI on the whistle follow. If they did, the monsters would walk over to the other side and not get hit by the damage. I don't even know why there's a Karambit. Karambit does zero damage. Don't bring Karambit. So anyway, that spell goes off and then he goes back to the normal easy spells. You just walk through the boss to the other side and have no problem. So like I said, here you go. This skill is going one side of his body. Make sure to stay close so you can move back to the other side and it's easy as that. No damage taken. But it's rinse and repeat until he does the two other spells that you really need to pay attention to. So here's one. This is a leap skill that he does. It's in an AOE effect circle. You need to stay close enough because when he lands, then as you can see, he casts another spell on the outside of the circle. So you stay close to the leap. And once he lands, you go into the circle and you can start damaging him while he's casting on the outside. He'll do this numerous times and you just need to pay attention. If you see him going up, make sure you see what he's doing. If you need to dash in, whatever, just don't get hit. All right, next is Suicide Bombers. It's a circle that's kind of like a timer. It'll fill up slowly, and once it maxes out the whole circle, it will explode pretty much one shot at you. Just make sure to be aware of where they are. As you can see, there's one to the left over here, and there's actually one to the right that's off screen. If the boss is standing in an area where you can ignore the Suicide Bombers and not get hit, there's no need to worry about anything. Just continue what you're doing. But you also have to be aware of his other skills because he will cast other skills while the suicide bombers are going off but as you can see we are safe right now no need to worry about the suicide bombs we can attack the boss if you see a small rectangular box here this is a skill that you need to be behind the boss not in front of the boss this will cast four consecutive damage bars in a cone in front of the boss so you just need to make sure you're out of the range. And as you can see here, the first one goes off and then a second one and a third one and a fourth one. Just make sure to be behind the boss. And then he'll go back to his normal skills, cast suicide bombers some more. Now this skill I want you to pay attention to. This is a skill that will cleanse any debuffs that are on himself. So if you bring monsters that explode DOTs, then this is the time to use your explosion because your damage over time debuffs are gonna get cleansed. So as you see, it's a slow filling circle and all the debuffs go away once it's been completed. I'll play it again, but all you need to do is stand in the middle of the boss and you will not get hit. However, pay attention because there was a suicide bomb going off on the other side of his feet. Just be aware of your surroundings. It does start to get a little bit hectic as the fight goes on. There's a lot of suicide bombers going on. He does more damage. There's there's a lot more things on the ground that you got to be aware of. All right, now this is the last thing I want to talk to you about, which I talked about before, was the guard soldier. Whenever you see energy of guard can be sensed from the guard soldier, you need to look around and see where the guard soldier is, and he has a ton of defense. So if you don't have a defense break, it gets pretty close. As long as every single person on your team goes to the guard soldier and actually attacks it and do what they can, then you will have no problem. The one thing I I do want to recommend is the putting your monster AI on focus target during this part. Once you kill the guard soldier, the guard soldier will leave a protection barrier on the ground. You need to stand in the guard barrier. The boss does a huge AOE. That's what he's ramping up for during this time the guard soldier is up. And if you stand in the barrier, you will be safe. Make sure to do that. And you need to be in the barrier because as you can see, I was an idiot and my mind completely forgot about the barrier that gets dropped. It's easy to forget simple mechanics every once in a while and that's okay. Don't fret if some of your monsters die. It's not a damage race, but what you can do is walk to the outside of the map 
Put in some new monsters and you'll be just fine. And it's really as easy as that. It's rinse and repeat until the boss is dead. The boss does more damage when he gets lower. So just be aware of your surroundings and follow this simple guide and you'll be just fine. Once you kill the boss, every single summoner gets a roll. The roll is dependent on what reward you get. It's kind of crappy. If you're familiar with MMORPGs and rolling, such as World of Warcraft and trying to get gear, you'll completely understand. But as you can see, the top three rolls get actual equipment. The bottom three get materials. You also get some other rewards for doing it as well. This was a random pickup group in the world chat. Thank you, PVM, Suit Lucian, Gold, Dark Ember, and Cold. And that's it for today's video. Follow this guide and you'll be completely fine. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if this helps you. If you like this video and like all my content, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.